Hey guys, this is KSP with Tape, and today you join me for episode 10 of KSP Road to Exploration, and we're unlocking some new parts and what looks to be reaction control systems and smaller lander cans and things, but it turns out I've actually got not quite enough science for what I really want to unlock, so I have got EVA reports now, though, because I've unlocked the new science center, so I thought I'd take out my little, uh, my little cheat rover, well, not cheat rover, my little science rover that I use for getting all of the science from all of the places, and uh, just grab a little more... Uh, a few EVA reports from around because there's a lot of science we get got from the uh, KSC. So, yeah, it looks like I'm just unlocking a few station-like parts. Yes, indeed. Um, there's uh, the the little kind of um, uh, the 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 hitchhiker storage containers for the people. And I just got a mission there to uh, build an orbital station around Kerbin. Yes, I'm actually going to build a station, hopefully, um, and then just. Yeah, and then also I think I got plant a flag on the moon, which is what we're going to do now, because we need a little more science for that station. There's a lot of new parts that have got to go into it. So we're launching pretty much the same rocket um, as we did last episode to go to the moon. This is, I think, Callisto 6, I think. Um, yeah, and it's got Mitgen Kerbin. Kerbin? Mitgen Kerbin? Yeah, Mitgen Kerbin. That's a hard thing to say for some reason. Um, at the uh, controls, it'll be his first landing on the moon. Of course, we rescued him from space, and that's pretty much all of his uh, experience, or maybe one orbital mission or something like that. Uh, but yeah. Anyway, let's just uh, cruise our way into orbit and ditch that stage, which will hopefully land on the ocean. I've primed its parachutes to open, open pretty late, so hopefully it'll have slowed down enough, but I mean, who knows? Anyway, uh, well, of course I know this is post-commentary, but whatever. Anyway, so let's switch to that, and hopefully we can get it to land. I need to be out of the atmosphere first though, but hopefully we can get it to land before this is at its apogee. Um, well, apogee, I guess, given that it's Kerbin. Apogee is, is is Earth, and then apoapsis and stuff is the general term. But anyway, this is just going to slide into the atmosphere, and hopefully those shoots will pull. But I, uh, well, last time it didn't go so well, um, so I don't really know why it would go better this time, but uh, let's try again anyway. Uh, so yeah, it's just going to fall through the atmosphere, all left at four times time accelerate, because it's stuff you've seen before, but anyway, yeah, you see the parachutes open and then break, and this slams into the ocean, which is a bit of a shame, but anyway, let's get back to our spacecraft, which is, you know, rather quickly falling back towards Kerbin, but it's fine, we've got enough thrust to put ourselves in orbit and head to the moon. Yes, it is pretty much the same lander as last time, a very nice, big, bulky lander, a large science payload and all of that. Uh... Yeah, and then let's just head off to the moon. Uh, we need to, obviously, the, well, the moon's quite good for its science. You can get a lot of science from the moon. It's, um, uh, and Minmus. You can get, pre you could probably pretty much do the whole tech tree with uh, just um, Minmus and uh, Kerbin and, uh, and the moon. But obviously that will be quite boring, and I will be heading to Duna rather soon. I've got lots of missions for it, and I really do need to get along with that, because, I mean, I think there were... I, I, my space chronology isn't great, but I'm pretty sure there were, uh, uh, you know, Mars probes, but well, more Mars flyby missions before there were moon landings. Um, I may be wrong. I, I, my, my space chronology is terrible. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I am not an expert, obviously, just uh, an enthusiast, I guess. Uh, anyway, so let's just see if we can get any more data from space around the moon, but it doesn't look like it. We already did mine the hell out of that in the first couple of Callisto missions. But anyway, now we need to deorbit ourselves a little so we can touch down in one of the craters. I was actually going to go for a different crater on the other side of the moon, but um, uh, but that was in the dark, so I decided to go for this one instead. And now just slow down, burn off the rest of the fuel on that top stage. Uh, that is a very useful rocket, it's very powerful, it gets me uh, pretty much where I need to go, and if it's reusable, that will make it rather cheap, because I think one of those uh, first stages costs maybe 8,000 funds, or maybe that's the slightly bigger one I'm going to use later in this episode. But anyway, yeah, so it's just a matter of trying to burn hell for leather and uh, try and slow down. It is quite a heavy spacecraft and has a relatively under, well, not a particularly powerful engine, but it's more efficient to use that engine than a more powerful engine, so I'll just, you know, have to do a little more planning, I guess. It's not really planning, it's more conjecture at this point. I pretty much know how to land on the moon, but that doesn't mean I don't make mistakes. I often uh, strand a few kerbals, and usually I design my spacecrafts to be complicated enough that if I hit too hard, the pod will survive. That's why they always are covered in so much crap, just so, uh, I could send a rescue mission if need be, <laughs> but tech life support does make that rather uh, 
rather difficult, especially given that I have started implementing a bit of a, um, a wait between launches, maybe a week or something. Although it's mostly just been time warping like 20, 30 days at a time to uh, get closer to Duna without just warping right to it. Because, you know, I like to do missions between things and I obviously don't want to wait forever to go to go to Duna. But yeah. Anyway, this is uh, slowed down, which is why it looks like I... Well, not slowed down, it's in regular times, time accelerate for the last little bit. That's why it looks so slow compared to what you were just seeing. But yeah, I do like a nice gentle landing, that's why I put so much fuel in my spacecraft. Um, but yeah, Delta V looks good. Everything is nominal. Let's uh, fetch some mystery goo reports, some temperature scans, some, uh, I guess some friggin materials bay science that's always good lots of science from that and we'll actually get an eva report from the moon we're gonna bring back some moon rock for once which we haven't done before because we haven't had the ability our gloves weren't good enough to pick up moon rock although i guess you need a bit of a shovel you don't want to like pick up a jagged rock and tear your spacesuit and die that wouldn't be that fun i don't think anyway so we'll just grab some more reports we've got to throw down a flag that's all we're being paid for there's no um lots of walking around for uh you know, trying to find EVA reports and stuff. It's just planning a flag, which usually pays for one of these missions, um, which is good. That's basically, uh, yeah, just got to figure out how to get the money to do the missions I want to do. That seems to be what this game is. Um, NASA, try to get your budget simulator 2016. Although NASA has been given, I think, like an extra almost $2 billion this year. Or maybe next year, I've forgotten exactly when it was. But at some point they're getting another an, an extra $2 billion in their budget, which pushes it to something like $19 billion. It may have been more like $1.3 billion, I don't remember the exact figure, but good, more money for NASA. They can do their Orion program. I am quite looking forward to the Orion program in the Space Launch System. I mean, the Space Launch System only really has uh, the missions of Orion and possibly the, uh, uh, not Callisto skimmer, it's the Europa Clipper mission I was talking about, but um, annoyingly the Europa Clipper mission has had an ad uh, lander added to it, which is fine, we can land on um, on Europa, not Callisto as I kept mistaking earlier in the series, but uh, yeah, it can land on Europa, and uh, uh, but that means we have to take a much slower path rather than slapping the uh, like the clipper thing, which is just going to fly by multiple times. We're going to put that on the SLS and had it there in a few years, but um, apparently that's not going to happen, so that kind of sucks. Although, maybe that would work with the um, SLS. I'm not entirely sure, but I, I have heard that we are going to have to do annoying gravity slings and all that crap. Uh, but yeah. I also like the idea of the, uh, I haven't been talking about the mission, but yeah, you, you saw, I grabbed a flag and I got an EVA report and now we're leaving. But yeah, I do like the idea of um, uh, the, the the really heavy cargo lift um, uh, SLS, the the one that can lift like, like literally 120 tons to orbit, which is insane, um, and could be useful for building... Uh, like a like a Hermes type spacecraft. If you've wa watched The Martian or read The Martian, which I think is a far superior book to the film, but a lot of people disagree with me because of all the like techno babble where he explains everything constantly in excruciating detail. But you know, there was a lot of things I was waiting for in the film that didn't happen, and I was like, ah, oh, I ah oh, ah. Oh. Still, it was nice though, and I do like Damon, and there were a lot of nice shots. Although he wasn't a space pirate in the film because. Because he never loses communications with NASA, so they can tell him to take the spacecraft. So he does have their permission, so he's not a space pirate. In the book, he loses communication on the way there, and he can't get it until he gets into the spacecraft, into the MAV. So, there there he's really a space pirate, but not in the film. I'm sorry to burst your bubble, film watchers, but he's not a fucking space pirate. Alright, okay, now I've ruined that film for you. Um, I was saying something about building a Hermes. Yeah, the big heavy launch vehicle would be good for that. Although... I mean, Falcon Heavy's coming along. I know it can only lift like 50 tons, but might be reusable, or at least somewhat reusable, which I think is really a better goal at this point. I, I think we've nailed, we've kind of sort of almost mastered the kind of dumb throwaway rockets, but I think it's really a time to start focusing on reusing. Sadly, the last Space uh, X mission didn't uh, garner a reusable rocket, really. Um, garner's probably not the right word, but uh, yeah. Uh, but hopefully the next one, which is a low Earth orbit mission, will allow us to land a rocket, which will be rather nice. Anyway, I've talked about other stuff all through this mission, but you've been able to watch it, and we've done one of these missions pretty much exactly before, so I thought it would just be, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, we do get to see some nice shots of that uh, stage exploding, although sped up, it's not quite so cool. I'm sorry about that, but I, it's just, um, 
Well, it's nice to get lots of content in these videos, um, especially when they're stuff you've seen before but aren't necessary because this is a, well, KSB career mode is just a exercise in necessary, um, in necessary kind of drudgery sort of thing. But anyway, gonna grab an EVA report of water as well. Just gonna grab some of that water, but put it back in the pod. But anyway, now we're going to launch the first bit of our first space station on the biggest, heaviest, but most bowling launch vehicle we have ever created. And yes, it is aiming to be reusable. We're gonna ditch those boosters and cruise on up. And this uh, this first stage actually has a a, a couple a probe core. Um, an antenna and some small uh, fuel tanks inside it so that I can do a small re-entry burn and communicate all the way to the ground so that I can indeed pull the parachutes when I need to and I'll be going slower so yes hopefully this time we will get this rocket back hopefully it will go gloriously so anyway um, the first stage is obviously kind of four times bigger than the second stage that's so it can push it most of the way so I'll have more time to land it because Unlike real life, you have to kind of do these things at the same time, unless I was going to get the mod, but I'm kind of committed to trying to actually do this without the mod that makes it easier. But maybe I will get it, I'm not sure. Anyway, you can see the core. Now, annoyingly, um, this space station, it has to have... Uh, oh, yeah, I lost a tiny bit of footage here. Sorry, it was pretty much me doing the re-entry burn, but... Yeah, um... Yeah, but I also lose connection here, so you will get to see all of that later in the episode because this doesn't work. Uh, <laughs> anyway, the first shoots go a little early, but it, they are going. They're not burning up, which is pretty awesome. Um, so that's good. But then we don't slow down enough and the atmosphere gets very thick and they break. So, yeah. Anyway, so this has sort of failed and these will pull, but they're going to break. And this is lost connection anyway, so I can't, like, do much cool stuff. But yeah, I did the re-entry burn. It was going so well, but I lost communication because my plan was to use that tiny antenna to communicate with the payload. With the payload, the station wasn't pointing at this um, first stage, so that's why this failed, uh, which kind of sucks. Anyway, yeah, um, the annoying thing about this whole mission um, is that I have to have 2,000 units of liquid fuel on the station. Which kind of sucks. I don't have that right now, but I'm going to br bring it up as a second piece because I don't have a vehicle big enough to take all of that at once. Anyway, I also lose connection with the station. I forgot to point this at the other satellite. So it sort of falls back to Kerbin. So this mission kind of wasn't great. Um, <laughs> the rocket didn't reuse and the payload was destroyed. So yeah. Mostly communication errors there. We will attempt that again later in the episode. But right now, we need to get that money back because that was about 40 grand we just like threw into the ocean and the ground. So we're going to put a satellite in orbit of the moon. I've refined my moon satellite orbit, my moon satellite rocket, yeah, um, to be much smaller. It doesn't have boosters on it anymore um, because it doesn't need them. And I've made smaller satellites and this has all the Delta V you'll need. It actually has a little too much Delta V. Um, going to the moon isn't particularly hard in KSP. I do flip the rocket there, but it's fine because I'm already on the right trajectory. Um, so yeah, this is going to pay us like 90 grand or something, or 70 or something like that. And we just have to have like a, a mystery goo unit and a temperature scanner, a thermometer. Um, yeah. And uh, it's a much smaller probe than the other ones. It has a little bit of fuel of its own for adjustments if I want to put it in a different orbit, but this will just be basically another relay um, for me, really, because it's nice to have lots of satellites around the moon kind of doing relaying, so if I do probes, and uh, if I send probes and stuff, it can um, have quite a nice, uh, it, it can have an easy time, you know, having a communication with something, as you'll see on this mission, actually. Uh, annoyingly, my two uh, kind of geosynchronous satellites have uh, diverged slightly, um, and Hawkeye 2 is where Hawkeye 1 should be, and Hawkeye 1 is just, I don't know, it's too, it's kind of slipped back. So I will need a new uh, kind of communications network quite soon. Um, so yeah, we're going to want to get on that, really. Uh, also, um, on the subject of communications, my Duna window is coming up quite quickly. I've realized I've done a lot of time warping between missions because I want it to come up, but I don't actually have the... Um, the, the correct uh, communications arrays right now. I don't have the big enough satellite dishes, so unless I get them before it goes, it'll have to be just kind of a flyby mission with no science, which is fine. I'm perfectly fine with doing that. I like doing, like, very basic stuff first and then not-so-basic stuff after. 
but uh, still, it might not be particularly, you know, scientifically great. It'll just be a mission. But anyway, we'll see, I guess. Um, it's a bit of a race against the clock right now. Uh, well, I'm counting down the clock faster than I have to, but I, I don't know. We'll see. I didn't really think about that. Anyway, uh, so yeah, let's just put this in orbit of the moon. And we do have pretty much constant communications with um, one of the Hawkeye satellites and eventually the ground station. Um, and if not, there are a couple more satellites around the moon which might be able to grab us a signal if we really needed. But yeah, now we just need to put it in the correct orbit with a small, uh, you know, kind of change to our uh, to our orbit. Um, I'm just going to equalize the plane properly there and then just push it around a little bit. You can see just kind of burning radially in a tiny bit prograde and uh, we should be in the right orbit. Uh, yeah, you see I do get a communication with that other satellite. It is quite useful. So I'm gonna, I'm probably going to leave this where it is just because, you know, I, I don't really have a proper network of satellites around the moon. I mean, I have those two which are kind of useful, but yeah. Anyway, um, so that's in orbit and we got the money and the mission and that's all good. Uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, so let's let's try the station again, shall we? Let's. I've, I'm gonna do this better, really. Same rocket, same station. Um, just, just gonna do it better, basically. Yeah. I mean, it's the Trump mentality. We're just gonna do it. Just gonna create jobs. Just gonna build a wall. Anyway. <laughs> okay. Let's just launch our way into orbit. Um, and uh, yeah. Well, not quite to orbit first. The main thing, obviously, with all of these kind of reasonable missions, is getting the payload to orbit. The secondary objective is reusing the rocket, but much like the SpaceX launches, everyone's way more excited when the rocket lands than when the payload detaches. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, so let's just leave that. We've destroyed a tiny bit of it, because yeah, we're stupid, but it was fine. It wasn't anything important. It was just a decoupler. They're not that expensive. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to put this onto quite a high and fast trajectory so that it won't get anywhere too quickly. And I'm going to point my uh, dish at Hawkeye's two, and then my omnidirectional communications array will point at this, and I will have control all the way to the ground. So you can see, I um, just left this sped up because it took freaking ages to find the fuel tanks, but I've got a couple of tiny fuel tanks inside the big fuel tanks um, to have a little tiny bit of fuel just to slow me down just enough. I've also got a probe core and a battery in there. I've got a very resistant um, antenna on the side, and I'm actually getting communication with this satellite I put up called Plansat, which is really nice. Uh, yeah, and then we just need to hopefully slow down enough, and I'm going to pull the parachutes manually. Um, and we don't lose connection, which is nice. Uh, yeah, I'm just pulling these down so that they'll actually deploy when I pull them. And there we go. There go the parachutes. And there we go. Now, annoyingly, um, the station is drifting very fast towards the atmosphere, and there's nothing I can do to get this down faster now. So we are just going to have to wait. And this is a real time. This is how freaking tense I was. But yeah, that little random satellite I put up there for Mechja planning, Plansat 1, helped for a communication just by a bit of luck. So yeah, there we go. Down in the down in the water. We're going to get it back, and we're going to race back up to the station, and we're going to do the things. And yeah, you can see we got about nine grand back for that, which makes this mission not cost forty grand. Cost it makes it cost thirty-one grand, which is a really good saving. Anyway, this is dropped back into the atmosphere, so I've got to burn prograde and radially, which means upwards, and just get out of the atmosphere and stay in orbit, and everything's good. But my uh, periaps is now up to fifty-seven, and I am going upward again. Everything was fine. It was a little bit of a helpful leather thing, but this is a very powerful rocket, so it should be fine. Um, you'll notice there's no crew on this right now. That's because I didn't want there to be any crew, because uh, this is just the core. There's not any, not really any things. There's a bit of life support on there. There's solar panels. It is survivable, but still. Um, I didn't want to risk the crew's life. Well, if I had a crew on the last one, the uh, mission may have worked. But then we would have never used that rocket, so... Face. Yeah. Anyway, that's in orbit. Uh, let's just put it so it'll never run out of power and um, leave it there. Yeah, shit. That's the end of the episode. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you are looking forward to the next episode where we will hopefully be maybe even going to Duna or at least heading off to Duna. I will see you next time.